Part 3 I had a child by accident in my teenage years before I started magic. I got my daughter back, who I left in the care of my wife. In this house, I had installed ritual objects including two large statues, more than 1,000 candles, 120 cats, three snakes and more. One day, I was setting up a game console for my daughter when a teenage girl from the neighborhood rang the bell. As I opened the door, I heard a loud noise. I shouted at her, asking her to pay attention to the electric gate. When I saw her, I saw her bent over, bent in half. I saw an Orisha, a higher demon had possessed her. This Orisha approached me and signified to me that he wanted to speak to me. We walked towards the room where no one was allowed to enter except me. Here is the message from the spirit. In exactly 14 days, you will kill your wife and your daughter. You will drink the blood of both. I replied, I will kill whoever you want, but not my wife, nor my daughter, please. Even, I can kill my wife, but not my daughter. You're going to do it. It's an order, you have to stab her and drink her blood. Then, you will kill your wife. I consulted all the great masters, all the wizards that I could. I knelt down before them begging their help, so this does not happen. Don't let them kill my daughter. She didn't choose to be my daughter, she is not involved in her father's activities. They all answered me, you chose to enter the magic, no one forced you. You must now obey, you are a horse ridden by the spirits. You will go and do what they tell you. At that time, I didn't know that Jesus could get me out of this. I didn't know that he had power over all these things. I did not know that he had power in the heavens, on the earth and under the earth. After these refusals, I went to a nightclub. I drank. I took drugs. I needed courage. I got home at 4 a.m. On the road I passed, I stopped near a vehicle. I wanted to chat with someone. I wanted to unload my burden. But first, I'll tell you that before going to a club, I tried to talk to Christians. I tried to talk to them because I was in such distress. But each of them turned their back on me. They were either scared or disgusted by my appearance. I would like to remind you, dear brother, that if someone comes to you, smells bad, looks strange, do not turn away. These people sometimes need your friendship. Remember when Jesus sat down with the bad living people, he didn't say, they stink these people, these people are stupid, these people look weird. But he said, he was sent for the sick. If you say you are the light of Christ, know you are for people like that, and not just for those around you. I needed hope. The Christians refused it to me. I had even tried to stop Christian cars, but they were taking day tours to avoid me. If this happens to you as a true Christian, to argue with a sorcerer or magician, don't be afraid to argue with him and even hold his hand, nothing will happen to you. Be sure, you are covered by the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't think a wizard can do anything against you. You are perhaps the only person to teach him, despite all his esoteric knowledge, that Jesus can free him from all these bonds. Because, we Satanists were ignorant. Even when we have become slaves in the pay of the devil, we endure hopeless despair. Let's go back to this morning when I approached the garbage collector. I approached him and became suspicious of him for the way he was serene. I parked my car and I approached him. I touched his broom to make him feel comfortable then I said to him, Have you ever heard about happiness? Do you know someone who is happy? He started to smile and replied, You won't believe it. But I'm the happiest man in the world. But you are a street sweeper, a garbage collector. You earn a few dollars and you say you are the happiest man in the world. 
I am the happiest man in the world because I am a Christian. Washed and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Then I asked, are Christians happy then? The garbage collector replied, yes, because they have the Prince of Peace with them. I said to him, I think you're crazy. He proceeds further, you called me a garbage collector, in fact, I take care of cleaning the streets as you said. But that's on this earth, in a while I'll be in New Jerusalem, over there, the streets are golden. I told him, you are crazy, you are crazy, what is this city? What gold are you talking about? Is that what you think about when you clean the streets? Does that make you delirious at this point? I really thought he was crazy. Let's say nuts. I had fun teasing him. Your Jesus is good and all that. He replied, yes, all power was given to him. You know, I have to kill my wife and my daughter because I am a wizard and I have to do it. I thought he was going to be scared, but no, his eyes started to glow. I asked him, ask your Jesus how much he takes to help me not to kill my wife and my daughter. I pay, I give everything he wants. I have the means. You know, I am really a great wizard, my rates are high, $10,000, $50,000, and even $100,000 for a mission. I helped a man to become president of the republic. I continued. I will pay anything he wants. I will pay advance part now, then the other when I see results. Does it work this way? He replied me, Jesus only expects one thing from you. A single thing? I usually work with at least 72 ritual objects. Whoever gives me a mission must spend nearly $1,000 just on materials. And it's $300 for three minutes of consultation. With that, I still have a six-month queue. So, what is this thing? He added, Jesus wants you to become his friend, open your heart to him, recognize your weakness, accept him as your only Lord and Savior, that will be enough. I asked, what are you telling me here? Are you telling me that I have to become a Christian? That I become like you? He replied, you don't have to be like me. I only ask you to open your heart and let Jesus come into your life. He will solve your problems. I said to him, but I can't. I've already given my soul to the Orisha. I can't give it to anyone anymore. He replied, you cannot want the blessing and reject the one who blesses you. If you accept Jesus, I guarantee you victory in his blood. I refuted, I cannot. I prefer to pay. He concluded and said, Jesus doesn't work like that. I got angry, I left and headed to my car. The young man followed me and knocked on the window. Whether you like it or not, God has a plan for you. I drove off. At around 4 p.m., I was in the process of carrying out the Orisha order when someone rang the doorbell. My daughter ran, saying, it's grandfather, grandfather is here. A very angry spirit said to me, this old man will spoil everything. My father came in, he kissed my wife and my daughter. He looked at me and asked me if everything was okay. As soon as he entered, he saw the statues that I had installed in the middle of the living room. He exclaimed, God have mercy on my son. My father wanted to pray right away. I said to myself, no, it's not possible, he can't pray to another god at my place, the Orishos won't appreciate it. I barely opened my mouth to ask him not to pray when he interrupted me. My son, you will let me pray. The name of Jesus is powerful. I was afraid. You know wizards, at least those from my land, don't really listen to their own thoughts. There are spirits that constantly whisper in their ears to guide them in their thinking. The spirits speak in the left ear. So I was afraid of my father because he had guessed what I was going to do. Yet he is not a rocket scientist. So I asked him how he knew what I was going to do. He responded to me, Christ revealed it to me and I thank him for taking me to your house at this moment. You are not going to kill your wife or your daughter. Daddy, please go away. I know what I'm saying. My child, a feast is in preparation in your occult world. Satan asked you to sacrifice your wife and your daughter. I said, you have to go, otherwise, the spirits will push you. He insisted saying, 
I will not leave, besides, I will stay a few days here. At that moment, I looked for the spirits, but they were nowhere to be found. Continued in part 4.